What's up guys, my name is Michael and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to do another lead code challenge. This is called Relative Sort Array. So you're given two arrays. One is A1, A2. All the values of two are distinct. All elements are two of array two are in array one. Sort the elements of array one such that the ordering from A1 is the same as the ordering of A2. Elements that don't appear in A2 should be placed at the end in increasing order. So based on this example, we have two array one has two, three, one, three, two, four, six seven nine two nineteen as you can see array two has two one four three nine six two one four three nine six these elements of array two are in array one and what they want us to do is return the output array such that these the elements that are, that are in array two are in the relative order so you see all the values of two one four three nine six are the same ordering as array two except that these values are the values of array one that were in the relative order all the values after this six seven nineteen are the rest of the values in, of array one that are not in array two and they are sorted in increasing order so i'm going to explain my solution and why my solution is actually not as efficient as what you normally could have. So what I did was I had a vector called to return. First I went through all the values of array two, then I went through all the values of array one, and then for every value of array two and array one, if they are equal, I add that array one value to my to return array. So that's what that ensures that it's in the right pattern, two, one, four, three nine six and these get these values get repeated basically these are these are the, the right ordering is the right ordering then I set array of J is equal to negative one that means that whatever value that I looked at in array one whatever value I looked at two one four three nine six is are gonna have negative one as their values okay so that means that they're already seen they're already looked at okay then I sorted my array one to ensure that the rest of the values are in increasing order, ascending order. So that's for 679, 6719, to make sure that that's in an increasing order. Then I went through through the array again, and then I check if I haven't looked at it, then I add the rest of the values into the array that I'm returning. So I add 6719 into my to return array, and then I return to return. So essentially, this is this ensures that the values in here are in the right relative order, because every time we see the right value of array at the first array is equal to the second array, it ensures that we add the fir whatever first value of the first array. Okay, so array one, we add that value. So if it's equal to array two like two one four three nine six i'm going through and i'm checking does it equal to two does it okay add it to my new array does it equal to two no does it equal to does it equal to, it equals to two add it again so that makes the two two here does it equal to two no 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 goes here okay equals to two does it adds two again here in the output array is equal to two no then I, I keep going and say check one does equal to one does equal to one what one 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 then I add oh I found one one does equal to four I go, add all the values that e equal to four into my new array so equal to three all values of three in this case three three add that into my array add all the values of nine and all the values of six and then after that I sort it set those values to negative one and then I add uh, whatever that wasn't visited means that it's in the are uh, supposed to appear in the end of the array, so I push those back last. Okay, so now let's look at other people's solutions. Let's see. Mm hmm. Okay, so this guy had a map. Okay, this seems more reasonable actually. So he had a map. Oh, so he kept track every value of for all values of array one. He he kept track the number of occurrences that array one occurred. Okay. Then he had a position of zero. Okay. He, 
if we went through every value of, of array two. Oh, so then, okay, so for every value of array two, for all the occurrences of array one, he decreases those while they're greater than zero, and then he adds those values to array one at the position is equal to value of array two. Then he goes through the rest of the array of, wait, what is he doing? Okay. He goes through the, the he, okay, so he goes to the occurrence list again, okay. While, okay, so he iterates through the, hmm, so he, he, okay, so he iterates through every value in the occurrence, occurrences, again, and then he subtracts every occurrence while the occur the number of occurrences for for each element of array one is greater than zero, so he subtracts those, and then he adds array one it dot first. Okay, so he adds the first element. Huh? I don't know how this works. Why does it? Why does he do this part? Array m. Oh, because then all these, okay, all these values, okay, so all the ones that are repeated, all the values of array 2 that are repeated, array 1, they get added first. Oh, so that's what this is ensuring, okay. For all values of array 2, they get repeated, so they, they get added first, okay, and then the, he adds the rest of the values. That's what this this code line is doing. Well, it dot second. Minus minus greater than zero. This is the rest of the values. Okay, so we could implement this solution pretty easily. So all we have to do is go through all the values. Okay, so we have to we have to keep track of all the values of ray one, and we have to map the number of occurrences for ray one. Then we have to go through all the values of ray two, and then while the the uh, we gotta keep subtracting the values of wh while the number of occurrences for the values of in our occurrence array is greater than zero. We keep subtracting that, and then we're gonna add that to our array, and then we add the rest of the values to our array. Okay, so okay, so we could do that. This is pretty easy. Okay, so. We are going to map, uh, this is array two occurrences, okay. So, we're gonna go through every value of, oh no, array one occurrences, my bad, array one occurrence. Array one dot size, I plus plus. Array one occur at i at array one plus plus. So this ensures that we're adding all the n the number of occurrences that these values of array one appear. So two would have three, one's gonna have one, four is gonna have one, three is gonna have two values, nine is gonna have one, six is gonna have one, seven is gonna have one, ninety is gonna have one. Okay, now we're gonna go through all the values of array two. Okay, then while the, for every value of array two, while the occurrences of array one at array two is greater than zero, we're going to subtract it. And then we're gonna set our position of array one to equal to that. Okay, so int, Position is going to equal to zero. Well, oh, so while array one occurrence 
at array 2 at x uh, is greater than 0, we are going to subtract subtract 1 every time from our occurrence list. So the reason why we do this is because array 2, all the values of array 2 are in array 1. So essentially we could access how many times have 2 showed up. Okay, the number of times 2 is greater than 0. We're going to how many times a 1 showed up, how many times a 4 showed up, how many times 3 showed up, how many times 9 showed up, how many times 6 showed up. While that that number of times showed up in our occurrence mapping of array 1 occurrences, we're going to decrease that count and then we're going to add that number of times into our new, our new array. So we're going to replace those values of array 1. Array 1 at position plus plus is going to equal to array 2 at x. Okay, so that's what this is going to do. After that, we need to do that. Okay, so now once that occurs, we need to do. Um, let me think. Let me think. What do we have to do? We have to go through every map again. And while the array 1 occurs greater than 0, we have to decrease it and then we add the rest of the values which is dot first okay of our occurrence to array one at position plus plus so we're gonna do that so for every uh, auto it iterated at array one occur we're gonna do while um it no while well, it dot first no wait what did he do let me see let me go back quickly go quickly go back hold up hold up hold up this one i think yeah okay so oh yeah so the rest of the values same equal to first okay so that's what we have to do so while the the rest of the values so while the rest of the values the number of occurrences of our map then the rest of them is greater than zero we are going to add it to our a one position is going to equal to it dot first and then after, while we're doing that, we decrease our second count. So I'll explain that again. And then he returns return array one. Let's run the code. So I'm going to explain to you how this code works. We keep track of all the values in a map, the number of occurrences for each L value of array 1. So in this case, there's two, three, uh, three twos, one three, one four, one one, two threes, one nine, one six, one seven, one nineteen. Right? That's what this is doing. They, this keeps this keeps track of the occurrences of array 1. We're going to go through them and count the occurrences of all the values of array 1. That's what this is doing. Um, wait, I, I, my bad. So that's what this loop is doing. This is the position we keep track of the value we're currently adding to the array. For all the values of array 2, while its number of occurrences in our occurrence list is greater than 0, we are going to add those values. Okay, and we're going to subtract the number of occurrences that array 2 showed up in our list of numbers that it shows up. So essentially this is going to add, and then we're going to add those values. So it's going to add 
the, the number of times two showed up, number of times one showed up, number of times four showed up, in this case four, number of times three showed up, three showed up twice, so it adds those, number of times nine showed up is once, so it adds that, and that's what this is doing, that's what this for loop and while loop is doing, it's adding those values here, okay, and then we want to add the rest of the values. So that's what this is doing. Add 6, 7, 19. Because it's checking the, the last two v values while it's uh, the number of current, the rest of the values, number of currents is greater than zero. Then it's adding those values. Because by the time this loop runs and it's already done, it's going to add all these values of 2, 1, 4, 3, 9, 6. Those number of occurrences in our occurrence map is going to be zero. So then the rest of the values are going to have at least just have one occurrences one occurrence which is 6 7 19 and those get added last okay so that's what this this loop is doing so yeah rate comment subscribe this was the better solution hope you guys understood my understood my logic of what i explained i'll take you guys later